What's up everyone? Eli here. Uh, I got kind of a special video for you today. Um, I do these every so often, but not as often as I'd like. Um, I'm just going to kind of do a, what would you call it, a showcase or whatever, a spotlight on a, a certain band. Um, that band would be uh, known as Grave Worm. <clears throat> um, and before I go any further, um, I'm drinking a beer tonight because I got off work uh, not too long ago and I'm fucking dead tired. I hate doing videos after work or even on the days that I work just in general. I almost never do it, but I just wanted to bang this out tonight for some reason. Felt the need to. And uh, you notice it might be kind of quiet in the background. I'm not playing any music because we're having kind of a storm going on. And uh, I just kind of want to listen to the rain and thunder, although it seemed to have kind of stopped as soon as I pushed play. But anyways, um, yeah, I didn't want to drown that shit out. Cause that's Honestly, that's my favorite weather is like rain and storms and shit. So it's just how I am. Anyways, the beer I'm drinking, look at that color, by the way. It's fucking beautiful. It's not my favorite beer by any means, but I do love... I mean, that, that gives you a pretty good idea of what kind of beers I like. Um, well, I got the bottle back here. I got this for my birthday, um, which was last month. Um, company's Ninkasi, Total Domination IPA. Ninkasi is a brewery, as you can see, in Eugene, Oregon, which is a, a town that's really, really well known for beer. Um, if you live in the Northwest like I do, you odds are you've had this. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty common around here. I don't know about other parts of the country, to be honest. Anyways, back to the music. Uh, Graveworm. Um, Graveworm are kind of like a like a death black doom type band. Not not so much in the death metal. More more on the black metal, like first wave black metal and doom. And just really honestly, I think the death metal you know comes a little after that. Uh, maybe a little bit of death metal crunch, but really, I mean, it's not really one of the main uh, you know components of their sound. <clears throat> um, kind of, if you're a fan of like uh, Goat Lord and Nunslaughter stuff like that, uh, Saphinus, I'm um, from the U.S. Um, you probably did Grave Worm. Um, real simplistic, you know, first wave uh, black metal type stuff. Um, they formed, uh, they formed technically in 1990 um, under a different name. Um, officially became Grave Worm in '92. Uh, pretty much the you know the baby of uh, of uh, Funeral Grave, a guy named, uh, that's his moniker, his name is Kevin. Um, he's actually a buddy of mine, he's a real good guy. Um, talk to him every every so often. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he's been going strong for a long time. He's got uh, dozens of releases, anything from splits to demos, EPs, full lengths. Um, he, he's he's kind of winding down from what, from what he's been telling me. I don't think he's going to continue on this project for too much longer. Although he has said that in the past, and he has kind of, you know, returned after saying that. I mean, people change their mind. Who knows? But at this point in time, he's he wants to wind it down after maybe the next uh, few albums, or if even that. So, anyways, I mean, he he stayed pretty busy. You know, like I said, he's got dozens of releases. Um, a lot of the times he puts out, you know, at least a release every year. Um, yeah. So, anyways, I, I have a pretty decent amount of his stuff. I, I certainly don't have it all. I wish I had more. I have a decent amount, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of show that to you guys here. Um, starting with, I mean, I have this shirt right here. This is the, the first shirt I ever bought from him. This uh, design is actually done, I, I think, by Mark Riddick, if I remember correctly. I also have this other shirt that's honestly even cooler than this one. Artwork was done by Cam Lee for Massacre and Death, and yeah, this shirt is sick. Check that out. That's fucking awesome. You can see it's got Cam Lee signature this is there somewhere down in the corner cam lee yeah so anyways that i fucking love that shirt um yeah so let's get on to the releases here this is his uh the first full-length album um originally released on uh, barbarian wrath in uh, 2000 this is the uh cassette version that was cd this is the cassette released by a uh, uh, time before time a record label out of poland who uh is no longer i believe but it was a cool label. It put out a lot of good old school stuff. Fucking glare. Even in a fucking storm. I can't get away from the glare. Boom. And there you go. It's a limited release. I don't know. I have some number out of some number. Um, yeah. That great album. You know, by 2000, you know, he'd already been, you know, doing this for 10 years. So, I mean, um, if you're going to judge the first full length, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a really good album. He'd had, you know, a, plenty of steam going by the time he put that out so 
um, on it's some of their best work. Um, I should probably talk about the members, by the way. Uh, like I said, it's it's Kevin's baby. Uh, you know, he's written. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he's written all of the music Graveworm's ever done. I, I I could be wrong. He might have had some guys chip in here and there, but he's if I'm wrong, he's written at least probably 98 percent of it. Um, he's had members here and there he's he's always wanted to kind of flesh it out as a full band many times he's just done everything um you know himself uh with program drums usually or sometimes a, a you know a session drummer um but there yeah, yeah there have been kind of stretches of time where he's had like a vocalist and a bass player um someone to do keyboards even but uh if, typically if he uh if he can't find anyone to play with him he'll just he'll just do it himself and he's done that a lot so um, it's mostly just one guy, but, you know, there have been other people here and there, you know, playing various instruments. But like I said, I'm, I'm almost certain that he has written all the music, um, the whole time. All right. So the first release that I have, um, this isn't the official version. This is a CDR that he gave to me, but that I actually might be wrong about that. That might be the way this came out. Um, I'd have to ask him about that because I don't remember. He did give this to me though. Um, this, uh, this is a 2002 EP, um, called the Beastial Hordes, as you see that right there, just kind of a Xerox cover there, and it, it is a CDR, but like I said, I think it might have came out that way, but I could be wrong. Once again, I'd have to ask him about that. <clears throat> it's good stuff. Um, I like all these releases. Some of them I like more than others, but, um, this is really good stuff. It's, some of it's better, I would say. <clears throat> And yeah, I am looking over because I did write some footnotes because I can't fucking remember everything. Um, this is right here. This is fucking, what is this? This is Carnivorous Monarchy. Oh, when did this come out? <laughs> Sorry. This came out, I don't remember. I think 2005. Um, or it might have been 2003. Yeah, 2003 this came out. Um, and this, uh, this, this definitely is an uh, official version. It's just got like a flyer that he put in there and a CDR. Um, like I said, he gave it to me. But this uh, this has Joel Grind from uh, Toxic Holocaust uh, playing session drums. And this is a really good EP. I think that's an EP. I forget sometimes. This might be a full length. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. Go listen to this shit. <clears throat> you can take half of what I say serious. We'll, we'll call it good. Um, next release, this is a full length album from uh, 2009. Funeral Empire. This also came out. You might you might recognize that painting actually. I want to say at least a couple bands have used that. I think I think Abigor used that exact same artwork on one of their releases. But anyway, this is released on Time Before Time, distributed by Obliteration Records. Um, this is a good. This is a real good album. It's. Uh, I'm going to say that about everything. I do like all these, but this is the era of Brave Worm that I probably prefer the most. So I really do like this. Um, it's got some live tracks, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was from when he went to Finland, I believe. I could be wrong, but anyways, it's a good album. This one is also really good. Um, one of the better, I'd say. This is uh, released in 2009, 2010, Black Fire. Also uh, released from, you know, by Time Before Time and distributed, uh, distributed by Obliteration Records. Um, yeah, really good album. There's got some, some cold, cold black metal type stuff on here. Um, uh, this is actually some of their strongest material, I think. <clears throat> Next, we have Infernal Minions, uh, from 2013. This was actually released, uh, Hell's Headbangers put this one out. Artwork done by Cam Lee, once again. Yeah, I really dig that artwork. I really dig Cam's art, actually. It's fucking awesome. Back... Yeah, Cam's a great artist. Fuck yeah. This album's great also. This is also one of my favorites. This one's got... Uh, it definitely has the traditional Graveworm sound, but it's got some like celestial sounding keyboards on here that I honestly, I feel like, uh, put a nice touch. A nice, uh, you know, a nice touch that was kind of different for Graveworm, but it really, really worked. Um, and they aren't on most of the releases. Um, I, w I hope they make a return someday, but yeah, that album's kick-ass. It's great. Um, this one came out when, uh, this is a Abyss Sorcery, it came out in 2014, more Camly artwork, which I think his art is, I think he's getting better and better, to be honest, it's really cool. Um, there's the back. 
Um, he was still signed uh, to Hell's Headbangers at this point, but um, they this was you know short. This was only a year after you know, they put out his last album, and uh, what he what he would do is you know if they didn't really have the funds at the time to put an album out, he would just put it out himself, and that's what he did. He released this under his own imprint, which I think is called Funeral Grave, Funeral Empire Records. And when he does self-release stuff, he does a really good job. I mean, he, he he does it the right way, definitely. I mean, look at that. I mean, yeah. I mean, it looks like a label put it out. So he definitely, you know, he puts care and, and love into his work. <clears throat> this next CD would be the last thing that he uh, put out, at least up to this point, uh, through Hell's Headbangers, um, Doomed to Eternity. The artwork not done by Cam Lee, but still pretty cool. Um, and this, uh, I gotta say, for you Nunslaughter fans, this is one of the last things that Jim Sadist of Nunslaughter ever played drums on. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's really cool. It's kind of like a goodbye, and it's, uh, it's bittersweet, but it's definitely cool. Jim definitely, definitely adds a really good, uh, you know, he, he definitely adds to this album with his drumming style. Um, it, it's, yeah, it's great. Um... Yeah, Kevin has been, uh, he's been friends with the Nunslaughter guys for years, uh, years and years. He's also been friends with, like, the, uh, Grand Belial's key guys and shit. Um, yeah, and, and when I say, you know, he was signed to, uh, Hell's Headbangers for a while, and he actually used to be an employee for them when he was, uh, well, he's still living in Ohio, but anyways, yeah, he used to be, uh, he used to work in their stock room. So, yeah, he's got, he's got a long history with the, the HHR guys. Um, <clears throat> here's another self-release that he did. This is, a uh, Into the Dungeon from 2016 return to cam lee on the cover art um now a lot i remember when this was right before this came out when he announced it a lot of people were giving him flack for the cover art like that just looks dorky and it just it doesn't fit grave worm but i disagree it really does um yeah it's kind of it's kind of cheesy but it, i don't know it fits grave worm and grave worm is about you know is about dungeons and and darkness and monsters and you know fantasy like that, I mean, I think it fits really well, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I, I, honestly, I disagree with the <clears throat> the naysayers. <clears throat> now, we have the last album that I have from him. He he did one. Uh, I think it was just this year or late last year. I could be wrong, but it was very recent. I haven't picked that up yet. This is from 2017. It's called The Shadowlands, self-released once again. Um, I believe Don from Nunslaughter did the layout for this. I don't know. <clears throat> artwork by some other yeah he did the layout he didn't do the cover art but anyways um yeah um if i'm being honest th this isn't really my best or my favorite material um you know i'm not trying to, to <clears throat> say anything negative but if i'm being honest um i do like it i've given it a few listens but it's not it's it's not my favorite it's i don't think it's as good as um he was on a pretty good run with the last you know five or six at least albums and i think this one uh, falls a little short. Um, I used to have, I think it was 2010, or it might have been 2000, 2011 or 2012 album that uh, Hell's Head Headbangers put out also. It was called uh, Blood of the Pentagram. That one's probably my favorite. Right, that one is fucking awesome. Look that one up. Hell's Headbangers probably has it still. You probably get it for cheap. That album is just so killer. It's great. Um, I used to have a copy of it. I don't know where it went. I need to get back. Um, I also have a couple couple seven inches here i've shown these before so if you've already seen them i'm sorry you know sorry for being repetitive but if you haven't seen them then you'll probably dig it this is a grave worm uh split seven inch occult creatures put out by um uh, fist bang i don't i don't know too much about that but anyways yeah it's really cool yeah next we have this is a pretty infamous release at this point this is a grave worm nun slaughter um Split 7-inch, and this is just the coolest 7-inch on the planet, probably. I mean, that's the cover, or not the cover, that's the one side of the of the disc. I mean, how fucking cool is that? I'll show you all of it. Like I said, I've shown it before, but if you haven't seen it, it's you need to. There's the other side. It's just so killer. I rarely play it, but uh, it just because I like looking at it so much, like I don't want to ruin it, but you know, I've listened to it a bunch of times. Um, there's the inner, inner sleeve. 
other side. Yeah, it's it's so fucking cool. Literally my favorite seven inch that has in existence. Um, it's great. I mean, I, I'm a big Nun Slaughter fan as well. So, I mean, it's kind of a win-win type thing. Anyways, that is all the Grave Worm stuff I have for now. I didn't want to make this video too long because I'm just fucking tired and I didn't want to drone on about fucking just nothing. Uh, so anyways, if you haven't heard uh, Grave Worm, check them out. Like I said, if you're a fan of, you know, if you're a fan of Goat Lord, Nun Slaughter, you know, Hellhammer, we're talking, you know, like first wave black metal with a lot of doom and, and a little bit of death metal. Um, if you like your shit really, really raw and primitive, um, check them out. If you don't, if you don't like that kind of stuff, I mean, you're, this is probably not going to change your mind because it, I mean, this Grave Worm, that's really what they focus on is just, you know, primal, um, it's, yeah, it's primal as fuck, uh, which I love that kind of shit. I, it's, for me, it's, it's just, it's perfect. So, uh, but yeah, hope you guys are uh, having a good fucking week or I don't even know what day it is. I'm so tired. But uh, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for commenting, subscribing, and uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Cheers.